This week's religious education class is one of the great ones. It's, um, it's about the Sacrament of Reconciliations. We've got a beautiful video to share with you about it. And, you know, we do try and have uh, the Sacrament of Reconciliation Penance Confession available for all our students, for all our parishioners here at St. Dominic. It starts off talking about a famous story. As a matter of fact, there's a, a, rock, a rap piece uh, in this video that's pretty clever. And it's referring to one of the most famous scriptures, a beautiful passage where Jesus shows how forgiving sins, he did in gospel times, he still does it in his resurrected life in our church, uh, most especially pronouncedly in the Sacrament of Reconciliation and Confession. But the story of Jesus and the sinful woman, here's this beautiful passage in John's Gospel. Early in the morning, Jesus arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat and talked to them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. Uh, adultery is one of the sins uh, in the Ten Commandments, it's breaking the Sixth Commandment, uh, which talks about husbands and wives to be faithful to one another. And the sin of adultery would be that this woman uh, was not being faithful to her husband. She was seeing another man, um, and she got caught publicly doing so. Uh, the shame of it uh, dragged into the temple area in front of a whole crowd, uh, in front of Jesus. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded that we stone such a woman to death. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. If he was compassionate, like they suspected he would be, He'd be breaking the law of Moses, and they could say, hey, Jesus, you're not doing this right. Uh, if he says stone her, uh, he, they'd, be, they'd, they'd say, really, Jesus? You're, you're not that compassionate person you said you were. What's Jesus going to do? Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin, be the first to cast a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the sinful woman. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Is no one left to condemn you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way and sin no more. This beautiful passage is going to be talked about in the video, the very creative uh, rap song about it. Uh, and the rest of the video is going to talk about how Jesus shows that compassion, this hallmark of who he was in gospel times. He does it still for us now in our day in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. I'd like you to listen for some things during the video, and the sheet will be with you after it. First is, um, I'd like you to listen to see, uh, are we our sins? What does the, the first person in the video say about that? Are we our sins? And what did John Paul II say we were the sum of? Are we the sum of our weaknesses? Are we the sum of our sins? What does John Paul II say, uh, St. John Paul II say, we are the sum of? And then finally, the third thing is, uh, who continues the mission, the, the, the mission of mercy uh, that Jesus commissioned the apostles to do? Who continues that in our own time? These are three questions I'd like you to listen for as you uh, enjoy this beautiful video on the beautiful sacrament of reconciliation. Okay, good. All right, welcome to Open Mic Night, everybody. Yeah, all right. Got some really great acts coming up for you. Enjoy. <clears throat> um, so tonight, I'm going to perform something from uh, the Bible. Um, John chapter 8. Well... Uh, kind of. I'm here because I need this It's needless to say my heart was beating But it's like I wasn't alive on my dad Cause I cheated, now she may be stoned Though I'm the one who's leading 
Don't look at me like that We've all been in the same place Crushed by shame That's why he came to save those who were stuck Cause really we're all lame Sin has got us chained We had a room together And they tore us apart I was left alone The shame Alone in the dark It was strange I felt the sharp pain Inside my heart So I'm here Simply hoping that my guilt will depart There's a crowd of religious men in the pack I see her, she must be stoned Now what say you? They ask a teacher But I should be up there too I was the one to lead her I want to help but they say don't bite The hand that feeds ya I said I just watch with my stomach in a knot The crowd's not talking at all They know that something's up The Pharisees want a stone I'm about to throw up But Jesus started riding on the ground And hope showed up so let the perfect man here throw the first stone The Pharisees backed away looking like their minds were blown They can't condemn you, that's why they left you here alone The one who can forgive sins is on a throne Everyone backed away, the lady saved by amazing grace And Jesus locked his eyes with mine, sharper than a razor blade Go and sin no more, he told us both like we were face to face I couldn't forgive myself, but he made a way I'm forgiven One of the most commonly quoted passages from the New Testament about the mercy of God comes is from the Gospel of John chapter 8, and this is the story of the woman who's caught in adultery. And it's a story you know well, where she was caught in the act and dragged out in public, and everybody's there with their stones to kill her. And you know the story, but let's enter into the heart of the woman. Just think of the shame that that woman felt. And I love how our Lord, our blessed Lord, he bends down and he starts writing in the sand. Why does he do that? Well, one reason might be that, think about where her eyes are at this point. You know, she's looking down as if our Lord, he, he puts his finger in the sand and he starts to write and she looks at his finger and she follows it up his arm and into his eyes. Powerful, powerful moment. There she is standing in front of the God of the universe. By all rights, guilty, but Jesus doesn't condemn her. Yes, she's a sinner. Yes, she's, she's committed the act, but he doesn't condemn her. He loves her. And I have to think back to this scene and remind myself that if Jesus could forgive her, then I've got to believe that he could forgive me. This woman in the story, someone who felt completely undeserving of love, irredeemable, she wasn't condemned. And in that moment, I think she realized something we all need to realize again and again. We're not our sin. We're not our sin. John Paul II said, you know, you are not the sum of your weaknesses and failures. You are the sum of the Father's love for you. We beat ourselves up a lot. And I think the devil wants us to do that. In fact, I heard a priest once say that God knows your sins, but he calls you by your name. The devil knows your name, but he calls you by your sins. Remember the garden. The same God who is seeking out Adam and Eve continues to seek us out all throughout history, even when we've turned away from him. God loves us so much, he even became one of us, becoming man in Jesus Christ. That's amazing the lengths he went to, to draw near to us all because he just wants to restore us to unity with him. We see this divine love in Jesus. His love pushes him to go from village to village, person to person, healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, comforting the afflicted, and reaching out to outcasts and forgiving sinners. 
Jesus still has that same desire. He wants to heal us. He wants to heal our broken hearts. How exactly, though, is the question. How exactly does he reach us with his mercy today? When Jesus rose from the dead, he met with his apostles and he did three amazing things with them. And we read about this in John chapter 20. First of all, he said to them, as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. Now think about that. Why did the Father send the Son? The Father sent the Son to bring forgiveness of sins and to reconcile the world to himself. And so Jesus is telling the apostles that they're going to go out and continue his ministry of reconciliation. And then secondly, Jesus breathes on them the Holy Spirit. He says, receive the Holy Spirit so that when they go out in this ministry of forgiving people's sins, they're doing that not on their own power or authority. They're doing that by the power of Christ's Spirit working in them. And finally, Jesus makes it all crystal clear to them. He says to them, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. His mission was mercy, to heal us of our sinfulness and brokenness, to show us God's love, to give us his own divine life. That's what his mercy means. And that mission of mercy isn't just something that happened long ago, something locked in the past. When Jesus did what he did and suffered what he suffered, he already had us in mind, you and me. We were already part of his plan, part of his intention. We're called to do the same thing with the mediators God has given us. So it's clear, this is how Jesus set things up. He gave the apostles the authority to forgive sins, and he commissioned them to go out in this ministry of reconciliation, and they passed on that authority to their successors and their successors throughout 2,000 years of the church's history so that today the bishops and the priests continue this ministry of bringing forgiveness of sins. So I remember the prayer that I made right before I got the call to the priesthood. I went into the chapel and I, I said, Lord, I just, I'll do anything you want. Just let me be close to you. One thing I didn't realize was the huge grace of acting in persona Christi and being able to speak words, his words, in the first person. The same Jesus who died on the cross, who rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, the one who sends the spirit on the church, he's present there. So when we confess our sin to a priest, the priest is what we call in persona Christi, which means acting in the person of Jesus Christ. Christ is truly there, he's truly present. Christ is working in and through the priest. I've seen it so many times within my own confessions through the grace of that sacrament. It's not merely symbolic. Christ is there as he is in all sacraments. Christ is there in the sacrament of baptism, in the sacrament of confession, in the sacrament of confirmation, in the sacrament of marriage. It is Christ who baptizes. It is Christ who confirms. It is Christ who hears our sins and forgives them. I remember reading once that Carl Jung, who is a psychologist, a contemporary with Sigmund Freud, Jung said that if his patients went to the sacrament of reconciliation, he would lose 99% of them. It's that healing just to hear the words, you're forgiven and it's gonna be okay. And sometimes people say, well, why can't I just go to confession on my own? Like sit in my room and tell God that I'm sorry. Well, I think we should be doing that. It's not either or, it's kind of both and. We need to be doing it in private, but then we also need to hear the words of the priest saying through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace and I absolve you of all of your sins. The mission of Jesus is mercy. That's why he came, to seek those who've made mistakes, who are broken, who don't know his love, 
who've turned away from him. And what's amazing is that he didn't wait for them to find him. Jesus took the initiative. He sought them out. But he didn't come pointing fingers or condemning. He offered healing, forgiveness, his love. And he does the same with us today. So if you sense a tug on your heart to turn back to God, if you are thinking that there's something you might need to confess, know that that's Jesus touching your heart. The same Jesus who said to the woman, neither do I condemn you. He's seeking you out today. He's inviting you back to him. He's longing for you. So no matter what you've done, no matter how long you've been away, Jesus is waiting for you in the sacrament of reconciliation.